Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this simple but quite effective RGB stretch effect. And as you can see, we can use it either on text or simple graphics or indeed on images as well. So quite a lot to customize. So let's make a start on it. So first of all, let's check on our project setup. I've got 1920 1080 frame rate of 24, and I'm going to go with the duration of 85 frames. So let's enter that. So the first thing I'm going to do is just bring in a background. Let's come to generators and let's grab a color solid and let's just make it something less offensive. Let's go with this. Then I'm going to make a new group above this, click new group, and I'm going to add some text. So I've gone with Franklin Gothic and I've centered everything up. Uh, I've got my line spacing nice and tight and just adjusted the baseline so it's all sitting vertically in the frame. It's all kind of really academic. Uh, you can put whatever you want in here and indeed we'll be experimenting with putting an image in here later on instead. So then what we're going to do is we're going to turn this group to fixed resolution and then we're going to add filters and distortion and scrape. So for this effect, I'm actually going to use two copies of Scrape, but just to make things easier, I'm going to work with this one for the time being, because what I want to do is I want to add it to a rig and a slider. What we're going to do is we're going to open up that X center and add that to a new slider. So add to rig, create new rig, add to slider. And we're going to come back and we're going to look for the rotation. And we're also going to add that to the same rig and to a new slider. So add to rig, rig, add to new slider, not the same one. And I've just renamed those two sliders, first of all, as rotation, that top one there with the degrees in it, and center, which is the one that we've got the scrape X center in. So then I can now actually duplicate this scrape. So right click, duplicate. And if we come back to our rig, you can see we've now got both values in there. And that's why I added it to the rig before duplicating it, because it, it avoids having to rig those values again. And what we also need to do is to rename these scrapes so that they are they make sense within the rig. So let's call one of them scrape left and the other one scrape right. And so when we come, when we come back to the rig, it's, it's easier to see. Let's just open this out so we can we can see those values very clearly. So I'm going to click on this little dot here, the, the one at the start, and we're going to set the following values. So for the left, we're going to set a value of two, and for the right, we're going to set a value of negative one. And then we're going to come to the end here, this, this one here, and we're going to basically flop that around. So for the left, we're going to have negative one, and for the right, we're going to have positive two. So we're not seeing anything yet, and that's because we need to set up the rotation properly. So let's come to the rotation. Let's leave the left rotation as zero and set the right rotation to 180. Let's move to the second end stop and let's have 180 for the left and 360 for the right. And now with this slider, if I set this to 25 and then we adjust the center value, you'll see we've got our the basis of our two-way scrape effect. So then let's set up our animation. So well, let's come to the first frame and let's adjust this center control until we don't see anything. So I'm going to go down to around such something like 15 here and then keyframe that there. I'm going to come forward to one second and 20 frames on the timeline. I'm going to hit another keyframe and I'm going to set this value up to something like 75, I think. Let's go for 75. So that's, it's fully revealed itself. And then let's come to the last frame and let's set this back down to a value where we've kind of got everything disappearing. So actually in this case, probably about 30. So now we've got this effect. What we want to do is we want to smooth that all out. So let's right click and show in keyframe editor. Let's make a lot more space here to see that. So we want to make all of these Beziers. So let's uh, select them all, right click and interpolation Bezier. Let's adjust this first handle here. Let's actually make it vertical like that. Last one, the same. 
and then let's select the middle handle and let's drag this across holding down the shift key like that quite a long way i think i'm going to go to about there and then if we hide the keyframe editor and see how that's working you'll see that it kind of slows down towards the middle you can see we've got that nice sort of sucking action there just at the can you see that that corner there it's quite nice so what we're also going to do is to flip the rotation angle halfway through so at where well, we were, were at frame 120 when we so so let's come to the rotation here let's set a keyframe for that there let's step forward one frame uh, to 121 and let's set that rotation value to 75 and then you'll see that after the midpoint the stretch happens on the opposite diagonal just makes it a little bit more interesting so now we want to come on to the funky part you'll notice i've renamed this background group as background and this group as stretch and what we're going to do with this group is we're going to make a clone of it so the stretch group so right click and make clone layer so we're going to start out doing this the conventional way and that means to separate out the rgb channels and to do that i'm going to add a filters color and channel mixer to this clone here. I'm going to call it red, let's call it red. So let's come back to the channel mixer and we're going to turn off the green green and the blue blue. So now we're just seeing the red channel. Now what we need to do is just turn off the main group here because we don't need to see that. We're going to be remaking the image out of these different channels. So let's right click and duplicate the red right click duplicate you'll see that I've renamed that as green so let's come to the channel mixer for the green let's turn down the red to zero and turn up the green green to one and let's do it one more time right click duplicate so as you see I've called this one blue come to the channel mixer turn off the green green and turn up the blue blue and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the blue and the green and we're going to set their blend mode to linear dodge which is in fact just an, a straight add operation. And you'll see that now we've got back to pure white because we've recombined the channels. So to get the effect, what we're going to do is we're going to offset the different layers here. So first of all, let's select the green and then on the mini timeline here, we're going to drag it back two frames. You can see the count there at the bottom, just next to my cursor, the in value there shows that we've dragged it back two frames. And let's do the same thing with the blue, but go a little bit further. So on the mini timeline, grab it. Let's look at that in value. So that's one, two, three, and four. So now they're all offset by two frames from each other. And then we get this effect. So the channels are split and it looks pretty funky, but when they come together in the middle, we're back to pure white. So that works pretty well. But it's a little bit dull. Maybe we just don't really want to have red, green and blue. It's, it's all a bit primary. So what we can do instead is we can add a colorize filter instead of the channel mixer. So let's turn off the channel mixers and let's add a colorize. So color, colorize. Now, just to note that the black is not actually black in the colorize. Uh, it's just a, it's a very dark red. I wish you could just make that completely black just, just for the purposes of this. You could actually make it a different color, but I think it just makes life a little bit less confusing at this point. So you'll see now that we've got a kind of different color in there and that's kind of already interesting. So I'm gonna copy that colorize onto the green. So that's holding down the Alt or Option key and dragging it onto the green. And again, hold down the Option key, drag it onto the blue. So obviously as things stand, all of these colors are the same. And in actual fact, it's you know actually quite a nice limited palette look, but let's just have fun and, and mix them up a bit. So let's start with the red. Uh, let's maybe go with this. Let's go to the green. Uh, let's maybe go with this. And let's go with the blue and pick this. So now it's actually looking quite a bit more interesting. 
But you'll notice, of course, that it, at the resolve, we have now got this sort of creamy colour rather than pure white. And that's because our colourised colours are not really sort of combining to create white, but they're actually combining to create, you know, an, a, an, an interesting colour in its own right. So depending on the colours you choose for each of these, you'll get a different hold colour, obviously. So, you know, if we were to adjust this one, for example, you can see that hold colour has, has changed again. So... There is a different way of doing this though, and this is to turn off these colorized filters and turn back on the channel mixers. And we could come to the group and we could apply filters, color, and hue saturation. And then what we could do is just simply rotate the hue to get a different sort of feel to the colors. So that's 90 degrees roughly, and then we can desaturate them and you know increase their value or whatever. Um, you're slightly limited because you're just rotating the hue in all in the same direction. But, uh, you know, that's kind of potentially an interesting way of doing it as well. But anyway, let's turn off that hue saturation. And we're, so we're back to our RGB split like this. And I want to show you what happens if we actually use an image instead. So what I've done here is into the master stretch group above the RGB text. I've added in this nice image of these tango dancers from pexels.com and I'll give you the link to that in the description. And so now we get this, which is really quite interesting. I want you to look at what happens. So the, the static background resolves completely as it should, but where they're moving, we get this nice sort of prismatic ghosting effect. And I think that's quite fun. So you can see you can use this with images as well. And you can probably use it. And if you think about it, you could also create a transition effect out of this for use in Final Cut. But there's just one other detail that I want to point out before we finish. Now, you remember that we offset these clones, the green and the blue the blue by four frames and the green by two frames. And I want you to look at the mini timeline here. Obviously that leaves us a couple of frames short at the end. So just for perfection's sake, what we're gonna do is with the green selected, we're going to come to properties and timing and end condition, and we're going to choose hold. And then what we can do is let's drag the end of that clip like that. So that actually we're now adding a hold into those last couple of frames. Let's do the same with the blue, timing, end condition, hold, and we can drag that out like that. So that means there's always something in, in all three channels, even in these last few frames. So anyway, that's the effect. I hope that's been useful. Thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again soon.